Who's ready to go camping? So I just got done packing up the rig. It is loaded, everything is in it, we are ready to go. It took a lot longer than normal though because I did not do like a pre-season organize, get everything ready to go again session like I normally do. I just had too many other things going on so I didn't get the, the rig reorganized. So there's a lot of stuff that's just shoved in there because I was like, oh yeah this and oh yeah this. But we got everything we need. It is all in the camper. I just may have to do some organizing when we get to camp. Steve went to go get Kennedy from school. The other two kiddos went on with Grand Grand and Papa because they're camping with us this weekend too. So they headed out early to go find spots, get settled in, and be ready so that when we get there we can eat dinner tonight. So I am just waiting on Kennedy and Steve to get back and relaxing and peace and quiet. And then once they get here we will hitch up and be on the road. Checking the LP. Okay, gas is working. Sometimes it's an easy tow, and sometimes you are stopped at a rest stop on the side of the interstate making adjustments to your rig because it's towing like crap. Uh, so that is what we just did. And now we are getting ready to hit the road and see if it's any better. It is a really windy day, but since we upgraded to the Hensley, we shouldn't be having as many problems as we are having. So we hope that this solves the issue at least a little bit and makes it a little bit less stressful of driving. Because uh, we got a lot of driving to do this summer and we don't want to be stuck just because we can't get our rig dialed in. So. We did level it out about four inches making this switch. So hopefully that is all we needed to do and she's good to go from here on out. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm gonna do some reading while we're in the car. See if there's uh, anything else we could possibly do to make it better, but it should be good. So we will just have to see. That drive is over. Right. 30 mile an hour gust. I don't have to hold on to it. Felt like we were driving through a tornado. <laughs> I I don't have to hold on it till like this. Was it I stressful for you? Like uh, not too much. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of excited. <laughs> I just kind of wait. To go. I don't think anybody can tell that you're excited. I'm stuck. I'm so tired and I'm excited. I get a lot of. You're talking as fast as JoJo Siwa. Yeah, are you turning into JoJo? Oh no, we forgot my JoJo ball. Oh man. So like even driving in to the campsite, you're driving past cornfields and there's cranes in the cornfields. So cranes, cranes, the cranes, cranes are everywhere. We're starting to see them in the sky because it's getting to be pretty late. So they're going to head back to the river at this point. I mean, the skies will not fill with them at a certain point in not time. So I'm sure you can hear me so well over my child. <laughs> so excited! So it is about 6 a.m., 6.30. And we are up to go see the cranes leave the river. When we first got up, there's absolutely no crane sound. And now I don't know if you can hear them behind me or not. But they are up, they're awake. So it's time to get moving.
go. Big, Big flag back, back here. Back. Oh, here come more. came out to the feeling blind to see what was out here and in the morning and in the evening I can imagine that it is pretty darn cool because you can get right up on the water so the birds are probably really close so um, that's the thing that you have to make an appointment for though that we did not do in time so you know what are we here for what mm. are we ready for the evening grain session yes I dressed too warm after the morning crane session. I should have known better, but it was really windy, like up until like right now, <laughs> the wind stopped. Is so. that one sandhill crane out there? No. Okay, I'm terrible at this. You will know when they come in. Like that over there was just covered. Really? So, yes. And we brought the kids this time around in the evening because that's way easier than the morning for the kids. But. Everybody's on this bridge, and we're all just waiting for the cranes. Here, Any minute. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Any minute. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. <laughs> Put it all behind Remember you and I Would always find somewhere to hide When we were kids So we could see and hear the water run River's gonna cry when you're gone Here, hanging on, waiting for 
you call Seems like time As a wave passing by Leave a mark in our minds The time It's hey, getting heavy That's what it is Go, 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 Ground and got a phone call from my parents who were behind us that our outdoor kitchen was open. The latches need fixed on the on those, so we pulled over on the side of the road and then we're like trying to get it to shut all the way. And yeah, it was interesting, but we got it and then we got down the road. Um, the camper is towing much better this time around, um, so. We got the Hensley hitch and we had the stinger in one way and you can turn them the other way so that it's higher or lower. Um, and so we flipped it over, which raised it about four inches and it is towing much better this time, which is great. Um, it's still not perfect. So we are probably gonna try to put airbags on the camper to see if it makes it even better. But it is pretty high winds today. The gusts are like up to 35 miles an hour. So it is a pretty windy day. Um, and it's like coming right at the side of us. But right now we are actually sitting at a truck stop because we decided to weigh the, uh, the excursion with the camper on it. And then now we have unhooked. Steve ran in to go get our first weigh and then we're gonna go back and re-weigh um, and see how the weight's getting distributed among like along the tow vehicle, we know that it's not great because it's still squatting the back of the truck a little bit. So um, hopefully airbags will fix that. But that's what we are doing right now is waiting to go do our reway. <laughs> the kids are ready to get out of the car. But yeah. I have a lot of things to tell you about the cranes that I will tell you at some point, but it's just been an eventful drive. Good afternoon, Gabby. This is Gabby, this is first way or reway. Uh, Reway. The four numbers in the lower left hand corner of your ticket. Uh, 3413. Truck number one for Steve. Yep. Alright, I got it. You can pull off the scale. We'll see you inside. Alright. You're welcome. Daddy. It is heavy in the back. For sure. Yikes. We really enjoyed 
seeing the cranes on this trip. It was really an awesome experience. I definitely have not seen that many cranes in one place. I've never seen that many birds in one place. It was just amazing to see how many can come together and actually uh, be in one small place. I mean, I knew a little bit that it was gonna be that massive, but you can't really fathom it until you're actually there seeing all the birds. And I mean, the skies just get completely filled. It's incredible. And we got lucky with Fort Kearney State Recreation Area because we didn't really have any idea how good of a spot that was to see the cranes until we actually got there. There's a trail within the park. Uh, it's called the Three Bridges Hike Bike Trail. And there's a bridge that goes over the Platte River and you can go on that bridge and watch the birds in the evening and in the morning, so. Yeah, the birds, they stay there all night. Um, yeah. And so if you wake up early, you watch them leave. And then if you're there, uh, at night, then you watch them come in. About 30 minutes before sunrise and about 30 minutes before sunset, if you get to the bridge, then you can see them either, you know, coming or going, whatever it is for that particular time of the day. But we didn't even have to leave the campsite to go and see them on the river. It was, it worked out perfectly, especially with kids, because when the kids got sick of it, we can just send them back to the camper. You know, one of the grown-ups can walk them back to the camper and you still get to experience it and have the, you know, seeing the birds on the river, so. Yeah, and that's definitely where you saw most of them was, well. The biggest number. Yeah, that's where you definitely saw a lot of them together. Yeah. Like thousands. Yeah, at one time. You saw, you know, in the fields, you'll see lots of them, but it's a few birds at a time. Yeah, it's, you know. 10, 15, mm -hmm. one, one spot, and 10, 15, the next spot. Yeah, so. which was another great thing about Fort Kearney State Recreation Area is that, you again, you didn't have to leave the park to go see birds in the cornfield. So just off of the outside of the park, you know, the, the street that you have to come down to get into the park, it's lined with cornfields. So you can go walk over and see the birds once again without leaving the park. Um, they even have a tree line at the edge of the park and there's a path that wanders through the tree line so it's kind of acts like a blind so you can just sit there and watch the birds in the cornfield eating all day long so yeah super cool yeah uh super easy when you're talking about accessibility to the sandhill cranes mm -hmm. and it uh doesn't cost you any more than you know your park pass your nebraska park pass so um Whereas if you're going to go rent one of the blinds, say at Rose Sanctuary or the Crane Trust, you're going to be paying a pretty decent amount. I want to say it was like $90 or something like that. Probably. To go um, do the blinds. And is that something that I want to go do someday, sometime? Yes, it is. But with kids and where we're at in our lives now, just going to Fort Kearney and yeah. hanging out and watching the birds <laughs> when we could was really the best way to see the birds. Yeah, and to get those private times, you have to sign up for them. Yes, in a advance. A long time in advance. And if we had signed up before uh, we went, we probably actually wouldn't have seen the birds because the winter was so bad this year that the birds were pushed back when they came. And so it actually worked out once again not to plan anything because we waited until the weather was more like a little bit more spring-like and we actually ended up coming at the height of when the birds were there whereas if we would have come bef like planned it out signed up for a blind we would have gone and there wouldn't have been any birds because they weren't there yet from the winter so yeah um it's just one of those things that was happens you know just happened to work out <laughs> well yeah well if you're gonna go visit the rose sanctuary during the day and you should because they do a lot for the birds and the cranes and and preserving that section of the river so that the birds can keep coming back year after year because it is becoming an endangered environment for them. Um, if you're going to go in the middle of the day, just understand that you're not going to see any birds. <laughs> yeah. They're not on the river at that point in the day, so they're going to be gone. 
Um, but you should go support them because they do a lot for the birds and their environment and everything. Yeah. You may see some out in the cornfields, and yeah. you'll see it going out to the sanctuary. But yeah. um, as far as on the river, you yeah, know, I good. doubt you will ever see any on there. No. You very so the blinds run from 6 to 8 a.m. If you showed up at 8 a.m. at Rose Sanctuary and walked immediately out to the blinds, because they do open for business at that time, you might still see some birds on the river. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, and the private, uh, what do they call it? Private? The blinds. Yeah, the private blinds. It's very interesting because you, uh, basically have to sit in those blinds for that two hours and be very very quiet mm -hmm. yeah uh, you can't can you can't even leave to go to the bathroom can you i think you can i okay. think people like i think they discourage it uh yeah. because the more noise that there is but like you can go out they have like a fence built up so that even if somebody has to leave the blind the birds can't see them um, but I think they really do discourage you from leaving the blind at all if you go during that. Yeah. And it's, it's cold. <laughs> like during that time in Nebraska, it's cold. So you're sitting in a little blind on the river for two hours. So, but I, you know, there is undeniably, there is no better way to get close to the birds on the river than yeah. those blinds. I mean, yeah. no better way, but it was a lot of fun and it, it was one of those awe-inspiring mother nature moments where we were like blown away by it so Just how many birds yeah are. I, I, it, crazy. When, I, when we say that they filled the sky i mean i'm not exaggerating yeah. <laughs> like, it is a cloud of birds yeah. so many birds but um roll that beautiful bird footage <laughs> that was earlier in the video mm. <laughs> it's okay though but uh, if you like this... Beautiful bean footage, you know what I'm talking about? I know what you... <laughs> we can go get our lab. She doesn't talk, though, like the beautiful bean footage <laughs> dog does. <laughs> but anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to click that subscribe button. And I don't even remember where we're off to next. Watkins Mill State Park, maybe? Let's put that question mark on that. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. We'll be somewhere. We'll see you on the trail. See you on the trail. Bye. Oh